Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good. Mr. Backwards. Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Ben Bernelsch. I'm a professional actor living in Vancouver, and I like creepy, gross, and mysterious things. Today is Halloween, and it's also the last day of my Halloween series, where I released a new video for each of the weekdays coming up to Halloween. If you missed them, go back. Find them, okay? Just watch them, they're good. I promise, they're creepy. Before I get into the last video of Halloween, I just wanna remind you guys of my Instagram and Twitter as well. Both of them are under my name, Ben Burnell, <laughs> with a Y, not a U. A follow on social media really does help me out because I'm a professional actor and so much of what we do is just trying to get exposure. So a follow or a like on social media actually really does help me out and I really appreciate it if you do. Anyways, let's get into today's video, the last day of Halloween. I thought it would be kind of a fun send off for this little series if for my final video, I did the final words of a bunch of different killers. Some of them are serial killers and some of them just one time killers and some of the final words are more serious and others are a bit more comedic, but I thought it would be a nice mix. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on each of these people because some of them I do wanna make full videos on, so I don't wanna give anything away, but also just for the sake of keeping this video moving along because there are 20 of them I would like to go over. So number one on my list is Peter Curtin. Peter Curtin was also known as the Vampire of Dusseldorf, and for good reason. He killed between 9 and 60 adults and children in the early 1900s, and he would drink the blood of his victims. He also raped and assaulted a number of people as well. He was put to death by guillotine on July 2nd of 1931. His last words were, tell me, after my head has been chopped off, will I still be able to hear, at least for a moment, the sound of my own blood gushing from the stump of my neck? That would be the pleasure to end all pleasures. Ooh. <laughs> Number two is William Bonin, or the Freeway Killer. He was convicted of murdering 14 men and boys between 1979 and 1980. That's 14 people in just one year. He was suspected of raping and killing even more than that. He got his nickname the Freeway Killer because he would dump his victims' bodies along the highways of Southern California. He was put to death by lethal injection on February 23rd, 1996. His last words were, I would suggest that when a person has a thought of doing anything serious against the law, that before they do that, they should go to a quiet place and think about it seriously. Our third murderer is James French. French was serving a life sentence for murdering a motorist who picked him up when he was hitchhiking. French had actually requested the death penalty for that, but instead he was sentenced to life in prison. He even wrote letters while he was in prison to the governor asking to be resentenced to the electric chair. At one point during his sentence, French was cellmates with another man named Eddie Lee Shelton. On October 27th of 1961, French strangled Eddie to death with a towel. For his second murder, French finally got his wish of being sentenced to death. French finally faced his fate of choice on August 10th of 1966, the electric chair. His last words were, how's this for a headline? French fries. See ya. Number four is the infamous serial killer, Ted Bundy. It's unclear exactly how many murders Ted Bundy committed, but he confessed to 30 by the time he was sentenced to the electric chair. Not only was he a serial killer, but he was also a rapist and a necrophile. He was executed on January 24th of 1989. Ted Bundy's last words were, I'd like you to give my love to my family and friends. Serial killer Marcel Padiot is number five on this list. The remains of 23 people were found in his home and on his property in March of 1944. His neighbors reported an awful smell and an excessive amount of smoke coming from his home's chimney. Fearing a chimney fire, authorities brought in the fire department who discovered Marcel attempting to burn bodies in his fireplace. More bodies were found in his basement and again, more bodies were found outside in his quickline pit. He was suspected of killing up to 60 people between the 1920s and 1940s. On May 25th of 1944, he was beheaded by a guillotine. His last words were, gentlemen, I have one last piece of advice. Look away. This will not be pretty to see. In the 1920s, number six on our list was convicted of the first degree murder of a police officer. George Apple was sentenced to death on the electric chair in 1928. George Apple probably would have been forgotten through time had it not been for his iconic last words. His final words on the electric chair were, well, gentlemen, you're about to see a baked apple. Number seven is the killer clown, John Wayne Gacy. He earned his name the Killer Clown because he often dressed up as his clown persona, Pogo the Clown. In Chicago in the 1970s, he was hired for a lot of children's birthday parties and charity events. He was convicted of murdering at least 33 young men and boys between 1972 and 1978. All 33 of his victims were killed in his ranch house after being either lured there or abducted. Most of them were strangled or asphyxiated. Gacy buried 26 of his victims under his own house. He was put to death by lethal injection on May 10th of 1994. His last words were, kiss my ass. Albert Fish is number eight. He was a child kidnapper, rapist, murderer, and cannibal in the 1920s. He claimed he killed at least 100 children and boasted that he had children in every state. Ugh. 
It was for the murder of a young girl named Grace Budd that he was sentenced to death by electric chair. His last words were, I don't even know why I'm here. Number nine is Fritz Harman, a German serial killer who went by a number of names. He's been known as the Butcher of Hanover, the Vampire of Hanover, and the Wolfman. His murder spree went on between 1918 and 1924 in Hanover, Germany. He sexually assaulted, murdered, mutilated, and dismembered at least 24 young men and boys between 1918 and 1924 in Hanover, Germany. He got the nickname The Butcher of Hanover because of the way he would dismember his victims. But he got the nickname The Vampire and The Wolfman because he would bite through the necks of his victims. He was beheaded by guillotine on April 15th of 1925. His final words were, I repent, but I do not fear death. Number 10 is the infamous Milwaukee cannibal, Jeffrey Dahmer. Dahmer raped and killed 17 young men and boys in the 1980s. Dahmer would also perform experiments on his victims to try and turn them into living sex zombies. As if that wasn't bad enough, he was also a necrophile and a cannibal. He would actually butcher his victims and then cook parts of them and eat them to try and keep them with him forever. On November 28th of 1994, Jeffrey Dahmer was beaten to death by another inmate. This man was an inmate named Christopher Scarver who called himself Christ. Jeffrey Dahmer's last words were, I don't care if I live or die, go ahead and kill me. The Lonely Heart Killers, Raymond Fernandez and Martha Beck make up numbers 11 and 12 on this list. They earned their nickname because they would find their victims through Lonely Heart ads. The killer couple was convicted of one murder, known to have committed a second murder, and suspected of up to 20 murders. Their killing spree lasted just two years, between 1947 and 1949. Raymond Fernandez was put to death by electric chair on March 8th of 1951. His last words were, so tonight I die like a man. Martha Beck was also sentenced to the electric chair on March 8th, 1951. Her last words were, I know my sins were great, but the penalty is great too. That makes things even, I guess. Number 13 on the list is John Avalos Alba. He was convicted of shooting and killing his wife while he was on bail for child molestation charges. Alba's last words were, okay, warden, let's do it. I love y'all. I can taste it already. I'm starting to go. Dr. H.H. H. Holmes is number 14 on the list. Holmes was one of the first American serial killers and he confessed to 27 murders, but only nine were ever proven. He was hung on May 7th, 1896. His last words were, take your time, don't bungle it. Number 15 is the Oklahoma City bombing terrorist, Timothy McVeigh. On April 19th, 1995, McVeigh drove a truck containing the bomb to the front of the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building. He lit a two minute fuse on the bomb and at 9.02 AM, the bomb detonated. The explosion destroyed the north end of the building and there was a children's daycare on the second floor. The blast killed 168 people, 19 of them were children and 684 other people were injured. On June 11th of 2001, Timothy McVeigh was given a lethal injection. His last words were, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Peter Manuel, the beast of Birkinshaw is number 16. He was a serial killer who was convicted of murdering seven people between 1956 and his arrest in January of 1958. It was believed he murdered two other people on top of the seven that were confirmed. He was hanged on July 11th, 1958. He was the third to last criminal to be executed in Scotland. His last words on the gala were, turn the radio up and I'll go quietly. Thomas J. Grasso is number 17 and he was a double murderer in Oklahoma. He strangled an 87 year old woman with her Christmas lights on Christmas Eve of 1990. He stole $8 from her purse, $4 in loose change, and her TV set that he sold for $125. Six months later in New York in July of 1991, Grasso murdered an 81 year old man. He stole the elderly man's social security check. On March 20th of 1995, Grasso was sentenced to death by lethal injection. And as part of his last meal, he requested SpaghettiOs. Grasso's parting words were, I did not get my SpaghettiOs. I got spaghetti. I want the press to know this. Number 18 is serial killer Kenneth McDuff, AKA the broomstick killer. He was sentenced to life in prison for the murder of two teenage boys and one teenage girl. He raped the girl, 16 year old Edna Sullivan repeatedly before he broke her neck with a broomstick, earning his namesake. He was paroled in 1989 for those three murders and then he went out and killed another person for which he was convicted and finally sentenced to death. On top of that, he was suspected of killing another person as well, but they weren't able to prove that. He was given a lethal injection in Texas on November 17th of 1998. His parting words were, I am ready to be released, release me. Second to last is number 19, John W. Rook. Rook kidnapped a nurse in 1980 from the parking lot of Wake Medical Center. He drove her to a deserted field where he beat her, raped her, and then ran her over with his vehicle. He was executed by lethal injection on September 20th, 1986. 
His last words were freedom, <laughs> freedom at last. It's been a good one. And finally, we have number 20, Roger Keith Coleman, who maintained his innocence until his dying words. Coleman was convicted of raping and murdering his sister-in-law after he was laid off from his job in March of 1981. Coleman's case drew a lot of national and global media attention because he maintained his innocence from beginning to end. He was put to death on the electric chair on May 20th of 1992. His final words were, an innocent man is going to be murdered tonight. When my innocence is proven, I hope Americans will realize the injustice of the death penalty as all other civilized countries have. And with those final words, Halloween is officially over. Like I said, I'll be doing full videos on some of the killers I just talked about, so if you want to know more about them, don't worry, I'll get to it. Or you could just Google it. <laughs> it's whatever. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. It was quite the challenge to do, but I like a challenge, and it was really fun for me to try and figure out how to do these type of spooky videos in such a short amount of time. Hopefully you guys liked the six topics I picked and that they were interesting and enjoyable to learn about. If I do another series like this in the future, I will definitely try to give myself more than two weeks to get it together so that I can go more in depth about the topics I choose. And my final words in this video at least are going to be reminders to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Like I said in the beginning of the video, a follow on social media actually helps me out in my acting career and my acting career is the world to me. So I really appreciate it if you do. So I hope you guys enjoyed Halloween and I will see you soon with another creepy video in the future. But until then, stay spooky. Oh, Mr. Backwood, don't you know? Yeah, I'll just get that. Yeah, I'll just get that. Yeah, I'll just get that. Yeah, I'll just get that.